Welcome to the AFCA Leadership Forum 5 Question Series. I'm Bob Ackerman, Editor-in-Chief of Signal Magazine and Signal Connections. Our guest today is retired Air Force Lieutenant General Kenneth A. Minahan, a Managing Director in the Paladin Capital Group. General Minahan's more than 33 years of service in the Air Force entailed many activities involving National Defense Information Services and Information Technology Development. Many of his key leadership positions during his military career focused on intelligence. He served as director of the National Security Agency and as director of the Defense Intelligence Agency. While at the National Security Agency, General Minahan helped conceive and direct the National Information Assurance Program. Also, under his leadership, the National Security Agency was a Baldridge and Presidential Quality Award finalist. General Minahan, welcome to AFCA, and thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks. It's great to be here with you. Thank you. What would you say are the characteristics of an individual that mark that person as a potential leader? You know, when you, when you look at history and people write about leadership, you find them discussing all kinds of characteristics. So it's a great question. My view is it's very simple and there's only one. You have to see things other people can't see. You've got to have a vision that you can tell people about and get them attracted to devoting their energy and time and interest in achieving that vision. And that's what leadership's all about. And that's the great challenge, is communicating that vision to them. What would you say is the most important skill as a leader? Well, there's two pieces to that. First, obviously, in terms of the vision, communication, and how you, how you get people interested to put their energy behind achieving something which they can't quite see, but they believe you can see. And secondly, understanding how to be among them. So rather than standing um, in an office or behind your rank or traveling in a context of a leader, it's the ability to walk out among the troops, talk to them, understand what their interests are, and communicate to them around what they're specifically doing and how that fits into the larger vision. But how do you know your leadership style is working? What are the indicators? Well, there's two. One, which I love, is I always want bad news to come to me first. Most people like good news. And so when people start giving you bad news, they understand what the vision is and they know that you can do something about that bad news. So when you get the metric achievement of hearing things that aren't going too well, then your leadership style is really working well in my view. Secondly, when you delve into those issues and you seek solutions, including everyone in finding that solution, so that to the degree that the vision is jeopardized, everybody's energy is in re-engineering re that piece the piece that they've got that contributes to that vision so that you can become successful again. You talked about people bringing you bad news. What would you say was your greatest failure as a leader and what did you learn from it? You know, I'm, I'm a Redskin fan born in Texas, so I have two answers to that question. Uh, one, uh, I, for the most part, I think leaders have a difficult time finding themselves unsuccessful. And I would struggle in that same context. Uh, I've experienced great successes, had some hard days, but never had a bad day, and have always been among people who could achieve the vision if you gave them the ability to do what they needed to do. So there aren't a lot of un unsuccessful efforts in that context. If there were one that, that bothers me the most, though, over time, if you go back to the fall of the Berlin Wall and the arrival of the peace dividend, um, the attack on the intelligence apparatus resource-wise was substantial. And I always thought that we didn't fight enough for our vision and the resources that we needed in that downsizing era, and that it led in part to the unsuccessful engagement of terrorism and the challenges of the 21st century as they emerged. So if I were to wish I had done something a little more, I wish I had been stronger in my rejection of the larger leadership element of the Department of Defense as it downsized the intelligence apparatus. Interesting. Looking back over recorded history, who are your heroes? I always like to read about Abe Lincoln. Uh, I think he had it kind of right. And if you look back at the vision that he had and the way he included people and how he succeeded, I think, I think his model is the right model. And if you read some of his books, what you come away with is in situations where they seem to be dire, and not achievable, in situations where resources are constrained, and in situations when people are taxed, that's when leadership really can provide 
an assist that gets us all through it. So I think it fits into that context, and I think he had it right as he described it. What do you mean he had it right in terms of his ability to assess things or his ability to pick the correct action? His ability to be a leader at the right time, when things weren't going well, when resources were constrained, when people were challenged, that's when his leadership showed up. He wasn't trying to be somebody all the time. He was trying to be a leader when people needed them. Well, General Minahan, thank you very much for giving us your insight and perspective on leadership. Thank you again for your support and good luck on all your endeavors. Thanks, Bob, and good luck to FCA. Thank you.